Hello everyone, my name is Vasco Elbrecht and in this small tutorial series I'm going to show you how to assemble a mitochondrial genome with high seq sequence reads. Those are only 100 base pairs in length, but we have 46 million of those. This brings specific problems with it, but has also some advantages. This might not be the same as the mitochondrial genome course we had on the 454 data. You find this here in the YouTube description below. There we talked a lot about all the different algorithms, a lot of the details. In this course here, this is just a small update. We're going to build upon those informations I gave you earlier. And actually we're going to use the same strategy in the beginning, but then we're going to quickly figure out that we have some problems with the data set. So we can't use our standard strategies anymore and you need to develop new ones. I will take you onto this journey with me and we're going to try a lot of different things. I certainly will make some mistakes, but um, I think you can learn a lot by just watching me critically looking at the data. And in the end, I hope you get some ideas how you can solve problems, why we had certain problems with the data set. Let me quickly tell you some mistakes I made in this tutorial. Those sometimes are quite embarrassing and not really necessary, but it's sometimes difficult to explain and think about what you need to do at the same time. So a few mistakes were, for example, that we downloaded the wrong data set. So they were uploading the data, we got this from a publication, onto NCBI, but did get some taxonomy wrong. And I was a bit confused by some things. And basically I evaluated and checked that it is the right data set, but I didn't look at the numbers right and still downloaded the wrong data nevertheless. Also, those are paired and reads, 100 base pairs plus 100 base pairs. But in the beginning, I was thinking it was 99 and 101. I have no idea how this could happen, but if you extract sequences, always take 100 base pairs. Also, you should right in the beginning use paired and reads. This is actually easier than just extracting a small portion of the reads, just take paired end reads. In the last tutorial video, I also include a tool which gives you the possibility to get a random subset of your sequences, and this might also be advisable to use this. We didn't use BLAST like we did before. We had this reference genome and we blasted our hits against it. We used a new strategy, which is basically just using the map to reference algorithms built into Genius. Those are pretty much giving you the same results as using the BLAST strategy, but they are much quicker. However, this didn't give us the control region, so we also tried a program which is called MitoBIM, and also a de novo assembly with Myra. And MitoBIM is actually based on Myra, and those programs also unfortunately were not able to recover the control region. However, they did give the same results as our map to reference approach for the complete coding region, which is great. So we assembled basically the genome three times independently and did get the same results. And sometimes it's just not possible or just only possible to get something with a lot of effort. So it's not really worth trying to get the control region. It's kind of difficult because the reference genome is not very closely related to this organism and also the reads are quite short. So in the end, we did give up on the reference genome and we just published the coding region of this genome, which is basically almost a complete mitochondrial genome. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial and let me know if you have any questions or feedback. I did know, I did make some stupid mistakes sometimes, but I hope you don't mind. So enjoy the course and see you later. Bye bye.